with the sun still rising over Stormont's Parliament buildings this morning, some pray for an 11th hour political intervention. We're here to pray when we go in. We need to pray that they form a government. But beyond them, the reality stares them in the face. It is just hours away from abortion being decriminalised in Northern Ireland. And for those who've long campaigned for this reform, it represents momentous change. How, how big a moment is this for all of you here today? I mean, this is hugely significant. It has been a long time coming and it has been a very difficult struggle to bring Northern Ireland's abortion laws in line with human rights. So strict has been the existing law here. Last year, more than a thousand women travelled to England from Northern Ireland for an abortion procedure. It's surreal in a way because people have been fighting for this change for so long. Denise Phelan from Belfast became pregnant four years ago then discovered her baby had a fatal genetic disorder. She says she was unable to get an abortion in Northern Ireland, but was too ill to travel elsewhere. I was too sick to travel, um, so I was forced to carry on with the pregnancy and all the psychological issues and scars that brings with it, uh, which is something that I'll carry with me forever. Um, so she died at 36 weeks and three days, and uh, I was forced to give birth to her decaying body basically because she had died five days before I could be induced. This is all happening because another parliament voted for it in Westminster. The fact is this devolved government has been idle for more than a thousand days now, brought down by ongoing inter-party disputes and thus powerless seemingly to stop these changes. When the House of Commons voted earlier this year to decriminalise abortion here only a revived Northern Ireland government could stop it. In what was dubbed a last-ditch attempt, anti-abortion unionist politicians were clapped into the chamber today, but the image merely flattered to deceive. The Assembly cannot undertake any further business. Sinn Féin refused to participate, the empty benches testament to that. And when the nationalist SDLP walked out, to cries of shame from across the room, as predicted, no business could be conducted, leaving the will of Westminster to prevail and familiar hostilities resumed. I wish that the DUP and others put as much creativity into actually trying to make power sure and work as they have done today to try and attempt to deny people their rights because that's what today was about. It is a very sad day and I know some people will seek to celebrate today. And I would say to those people, think of those of us who are sad today and who believe that this is an affront to human dignity and to human life. Press conferences inside, more prayers outside. To the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. A few miles away in Belfast, meanwhile, others were heralding another landmark moment. Because under these changes, from January next year, same-sex marriage will also be legalised in Northern Ireland for the first time. For Denise Phelan, the midnight transformation in abortion law here will bring mixed emotions. It is a victory for women's rights and I'm sure some people will celebrate but um, for us and for what we've been through um, this is something which just had to be done um, and I, I'm, I think that at midnight tonight we'll just be feeling glad, glad that this period of, of barbarism and cruelty against women and young girls is over. A moment of history hard fought but as today only serves to highlight it comes against a political backdrop as spectacular as it is dysfunctional. Northern Ireland's vacuum in government exposed once again.